Hey everyone, it's Josh from HeatingAll.com. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, what we're going to do today is replace an analog thermostat with a digital model. As you may have read in, on HeatingAll.com, uh, using a digital thermostat is a great way to save money on your heating bill because it allows you con to control your heat more precisely and make sure that you're not heating your home any longer or any hotter than you absolutely need to. Uh, I've been meaning to do it in my apartment for quite a while and um, decided to take care of it this weekend and I uh, want to invite you all to uh, come along for the ride. So what we want to do first is just lay out the tools you'll need for this installation. First thing is of course a digital thermostat and you can pick one of these up at any uh, hardware store, home improvement store. They usually run you about 20 or 30 bucks. Again, uh, well worth the money uh, considering uh, the dollars you're going to save over the next couple of years. Uh, just on your heating bills alone. Next we have the installation guide um, for the digital thermostat. Again, I'm not a professional, I've never done this before, so uh, I needed to read those instructions very carefully to make sure I didn't screw anything up, and I'd advise you to do the same. Uh, next are the instructions for um, just how to operate and program your thermostat once it is installed. Next to that, screwdriver. Uh, this is a flathead, but you might need um, a Phillips head as well, uh, depending on what kind of screws are used to mount your thermostat. Some needle nose pliers just to cut off the covers on the wires uh, when you connect your new thermostat to your wall. And uh, finally, a smaller screwdriver to get at those uh, small screws that hold the actual thermostat itself together. And uh, that's about it, so let's get started. All right, the first step, and probably the most important step, is to turn off the power to your thermostat before you start working. If you don't, uh, you run the risk of electrical shock and nobody likes that. And uh, just to show you, uh, you know, that this is a hot uh, item here that could uh, cause some damage if you don't turn the power off. You'll see if I uh, use my screwdriver before turning the power off, get a bit of a spark coming at you. If that ended up going through your arm, it wouldn't feel too good. And when you turn the uh, electricity off uh, to your thermostat, you may have to go to your fuse box or your circuit breaker box. Um, to turn it off uh, along with some other outlets or light fixtures in your house. Uh, I happen to live in an apartment that has a separate circuit for the heater itself, so uh, I just flip this light switch right here and that takes care of it. And so I'm just going to go right in and go for these screws that attach the thermostat to the wall. Usually there's one at the top and one at the bottom, and uh, just those two usually hold the uh, thermostat to the wall, so you got to take those off first. So now we have this away from the wall, um, just get a little bit of slack here and then I'm going to use that small small screwdriver to uh, unscrew these ports and disconnect these wires. Okay, so I've removed my old thermostat and uh, just another uh, note on, sa on safety here, environmental safety as well. As you can see there's a little bit of mercury right here and that's how uh, the analog thermostat tells the temperature. Uh, mercury is technically a hazardous material so you can't just toss this thing in the garbage. Uh, you're going to need to uh, take a look on the internet or call around and uh, find out where uh, in your community you can uh, dispose of uh, mercury and other hazardous materials properly and safely. All right, so now we're ready to uh, begin the installation uh, of the new thermostat. So here you have it um, in its complete form. And so what I need to do is uh, take off that faceplate again, just like we did with the old one. And in this case, it's just uh, done by unscrewing this little screw at the bottom and separating the two pieces. And so this part is the part that's gonna go against the wall and then this front part with the screen and everything, that will uh, go on on top of it. Now that I have the back plate here, I'm going to put the wires through um, this space for the wires here. Push it up against the wall. Cool. So now we have the back plate installed. Uh, it's nice and snug on there. And uh, you see the two screws holding it in place. And so our next step is now to attach the wires to the appropriate ports here. So uh, again, this is the important part where you really got to pay attention. Um, right here it shows the map for where each wire should go. And because I only have two wires, uh, like we said before, the white wire is W and the uh, red wire is R. And I looked at the installation instructions and they told me to uh, put just a regular R into the RH port, which is this. And then the W uh, will go to the W port uh, down here. Alrighty, the hardest part is done and the final step is just attaching your digital faceplate uh, to the digital back plate that we just installed. Um, I've already put in uh, two AAA batteries um, to power the thermostat. Again, depending on what model you get, you may need uh, one AA, two AAA, uh, whatever, but uh, you'll probably need a, at least a couple batteries to uh, uh, run the digital brain to the operation. So what I'm going to do is just uh, start at the top, hang this down, click it on, and then tighten the screw that holds the faceplate on. And that'll do it. Uh, and so now all I need to do, turn the power back on to my heating system, um, set this up with the correct time and temperature, and um, I'll be ready to save some money on my heating oil. So thanks for stopping by, and uh, good luck with your projects, and uh, we'll see you next time.